Did you have a question on your mind? What's on your mind? Um, praise the Lord. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Pastor, sir, for this opportunity to be part of the Easter Youth Camp. You have transformed my life imminently in every way. My parents are pastors in Kenya. They have their own church. But because of how much impact you've made in my life through your messages, they gave me as a seed to Christ's embassy. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> thank you. Very yes, much. to Pastor Shijidara. And thank you so much for sending Pastor Shijidara to Kenya. He has transformed my life so much, so much. So my question was, the first question was, there was a t- um, I was the time I was preparing to come to this camp. I was praying a lot, listening to your messages, listening to the word of God, and things were just working out perfectly. Then God pre- in my school, I wanted to reach out to some guys. I used to play rugby before, but I stopped. So I wanted to reach out to the rugby team. They didn't accept the messages yet, but when one of them died, I didn't know he had a brain tumor. So I received the message like 30 minutes just 30 minutes after he had died. So I, th- I was so excited that I was going to go there and raise the dead and all of them were going to give their lives to Christ. But I went there, I felt something pulling, the spirit of death, I think. Then I started praying. I started praying. I spoke in tongues. Then as I was speaking, I wanted to round up the prayers. I remembered from one of your messages saying, keep, keep, keep going on, keep going on. You're winning, you're winning. Then I continued praying, continued praying. Then I heard that I should focus on those that are alive, that I should not um, dwell on what has just happened, but I was sure that he had gone to hell. Should I have, um, what should I have done? Should I have um, commanded his body to receive back his spirit, or what should I have done in that case? Then the second case was two weeks after. My granduncle, he was 50, 57 years of age, so what happened was um, he was at the ICU because of kidney failure. Um, he, he had dialysis for over seven years now. But when I had that situation, I connected it to the other one. So I went there first. So I preached to him the message of Jesus Christ. Many times it, it, it had been preached to him, but he didn't accept it. But as I preached it to him, it was getting to him, getting to him. Especially I gave him an example that you gave us, um, our pastor gave us, Pastor Shiji, that there was a man who was 60 years of age, but when he came and listened to you, he wanted to retire, but he went back to business. And by the time he was 65, he had made his first $1 million. So I told him that message, and he was so inspired. And he said he wants to give his life to Christ and to receive the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues. So I prayed for him. He, was, he received Christ that moment and the ability to speak in tongues. So the next day, I came back with, do you believe in miracles? So he was much better. He was even discharged on that next day. So we took him, we took him home. But when I left him with all those messages, a week later, everything became so bad. The situation was so bad. When they took him to hospital, he died. What, what happened? Because... Yeah. <laughs> It's interesting to ask me what happened. In the first case, you heard a voice within you telling you to focus on those who are alive. You always have to learn to follow that voice inside you. So your question was, what should you have done? And I would say, you're supposed to follow that voice that was guiding you inside you i mentioned yesterday that satan cannot talk to you inside you he'll talk from outside you because he doesn't live in you the holy spirit lives in you and when the holy spirit talks to you in your spirit you you have to listen to him he's always right yeah so that will be yes please lastly lastly sir yeah Mm. I remember about six months ago, uh, our pastor... Is this, is this another case? Okay, can I answer the second one? Yeah. You've, you've mentioned two cases, so I just wanted to comment on the first one and the second one. But I, I'm through with the first one. Now, the second one, 
you said what happened yeah um firstly you know when people live their lives they program themselves in a certain direction they condition themselves and this man may have already lived his life in a certain direction now you come with the gospel and preach to him much as he may want to live he would need help to be guided into the word god said my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge now he has just started he's just getting to know the word even though he was almost 60 years old but he has spent most of his life without knowing the lord now he's heard the word in a condition terrible health condition he gets well but he doesn't know what awaits him the challenges of faith see we never neglect that the bible tells us that those who must live godly in christ will suffer what persecution that's going to happen and some people face persecution and run away they don't want to serve the lord anymore because they weren't expecting persecution then for health when people get healed there can be challenges to your faith but you have to learn to stand your ground but no one taught him he didn't know that and probably the, the next time he felt the symptoms he said to himself oh maybe i wasn't here he was listening to the, the devil so oh maybe maybe i wasn't here or oh fear has come to his heart and then he's unable to make it see when people get healed look at it this way because one of the reasons we are very successful with the healing school is that we continue to follow people up and teach them the word so you find people who come to testify three years after they've been healed six years after they've been healed how did they make it because they stayed on the word see if you were most people were not were not sick when they were born all right so they became sick at a certain period of their lives probably from some lifestyle something went wrong or a satanic attack on their lives and then this sickness came to them okay now we've preached the gospel to them and they are healed jesus said do not go back to sin lest a worse thing than this comes to you he said that to a man that he had healed he said don't go back to sin or your condition will be worse he meant it so they have to be taught that now that you are healed you have to live in god's word you can't just continue the way you were living before. After all, the way you were living before, Satan had the opportunity to attack you. So if you go back, you are in danger yourself. It could be worse. And such a situation might have happened to the gentleman you are talking about. They always have to be taught. The same way when people give their hearts to Christ, we teach them how to remain in the Lord. Right? And we strengthen them with the word. We encourage them that even if things get difficult, they must know the Lord is with them. And we also stress the importance of having the Holy Spirit. So we minister to them to have the Holy Spirit. And then they are strengthened. That's what you do for the sick as well. When people are healed, they must be taught the word of God. So their healing can remain. All right, what was the last thing you wanted to say? Okay. Mm, so I... There was one time our pastor, Pastor Shiji, was preaching to us and he was telling us that we can make changes instantly in our lives. And he gave us an instance of your, in the years between 2000 and 2003, there was a